Hey there. Um, I have received some comments and requests for videos on uh, machine learning as applied to uh, trading. Now, I haven't done any videos on that topic. Uh, the main reason for which is I don't really think there's a there there, uh, at least as far, you know, from the point of view of a retail trader, I don't think there's really a point uh, to it. I could see perhaps if you're, a, you know, uh, running a multi-billion dollar hedge fund or you're a market maker, make, market maker, maybe you could squeeze out, you know, a fraction of a penny more than you would have otherwise. But again, I don't really think there's a lot of utility for for people on the retail side of it. Um, but it's still an interesting topic, and I might actually kind of review what uh, literature, what academic literature there is on the subject. And um, But in the meantime, I was thinking of just doing a, a simple video on uh, gradient descent, which is an optimization process. You know, it's a common algorithm. Uh, gradient descent and variations thereof is a very common algorithm used in machine learning. Um, as I said, it's an optimization process and a lot of machine learning comes down basically to just that, finding the minimum of some sort of cost function uh, to, build your, to build your models. So I think the way I'm gonna structure this is just uh, do a very simple problem first, kind of describe the algorithm and then find the minimum of a, uh, of a parabola, a quadratic equation. And then it will extend it to a more difficult, uh, not more difficult, but slightly more involved um, problem. Uh, since we've already done linear regression on this channel, we'll just solve the linear regression problem uh, using gradient descent to find, the, to find the minimum of the least squares equation. And then perhaps we'll do um, something like a logistic regression, something again, it's a little more involved, but not, not, not terribly difficult. Okay, so notebook time. Um, we don't really need anything as far as imports. I'm just pulling in NumPy and Matplotlib to visualize, and I may use the uh, minimize function from SciPy, optimize, just to uh, to compare results. So we're going to start off very simple here with a quadratic equation. So it's a it's a function of one variable, and down here, aside from this utility function which I wrote to plot tangent lines, um, I've just defined two functions. We're going to need the derivative eventually, which is right down here and just a function that returns this quadratic equation um, up here, and that's defined here. So if we plot this out, um, no surprise, it's a parabola with a minimum uh, down here, I believe it's at minus 1.25, if you actually work out uh, what that number is, because obviously this could be calculated by hand. Uh, I think it's minus 1.25. So let's just kind of pick a value at random, which I've defined here as some point x0 equal to 4, we calculate the derivative at that point, and then I'm just going to plot the slope of that tangent line um, at that point, and I do this down here. So uh, plot that tangent line. So that's shown here. Now, obviously, um, if you're familiar with calculus, obviously the derivative gives you the rate of change of the function at that particular point. In this case, uh, x equals to x equals four, and a positive number means it's increasing as you go in a positive direction. Uh, therefore decreasing if you go in a negative direction. And if we had picked, uh, for example, let's just say minus four, minus four, uh, we get here, the slope is a negative number, which obviously means the function is decreasing as you move to the right on this plot or increasing as we move to the left. So let's just put this back to um, a positive value to begin with. Okay. So we know from calculus that at a max or a min, and we're looking for a min here, uh, the derivative is equal to zero. So in this case, our derivative is positive. So we're uh, increasing to the right, decreasing to the left, as I just mentioned. So what we can do is use an iterative technique where we walk down our test point, uh, checking the derivative to see what it is at each point. So I could take it, for example, to three. Our derivative is still positive, so we can go to two, still positive, how about one, positive, zero, positive but getting shallower, how about minus one, still positive, minus two, something's not right there what I do, Minus minus two. How about minus two? There we go. Negative. So now we need to, we need to go the other way to the right to move in the direction of the de decreasing function. So let's say minus one point five, and so on. You get the point at this at this stage. 
So, okay, we can code this up here. Uh, here is the Wikipedia article on gradient descent, and it gives us basically just a formula on how to update our guess. Um, so this is the formula here. So if A sub I is our initial guess of a root, A sub N, I'm sorry, is our initial guess of the root, our new guess is equal to the original one, and we're going to subtract off a number proportional to the, to the gradient, in this case, or the derivative in our one-dimensional case. So this negative gradient is our, our uh, walking downhill. Uh, this factor gamma is just a scaling uh, factor. Um, I think machine learning people tend to use alpha more than gamma, but I'm going to keep the, uh, the Wikipedia um, nomenclature here and, and use gamma. Okay, so let's actually go back to our notebook and code this up. Okay, so I copied our gradient descent update rule here, and now let's write the function itself. So I'm going to do uh, define gradient descent. I'm going to write um, our function that calculates, calculates the derivative. I'm just going to, just going to call f prime for now. Uh, our initial guess of the root will be, I'll just call it x0. Um, I think I will pass in some arguments uh, if the function, if, if our other functions need it. So I'm going to have the, uh, the capability to pass in additional arguments to this function. Uh, let's set a default value of gamma. Uh, let's go equal to 10 to the minus 3. And I will set uh, a maximum number of iterations. Uh, I don't know. Let's do 10 to the 5, uh, so 100,000. Okay. Um, for the time being, rather than a cutoff uh, criteria, I'm just going to go over all the uh, iterations we, we set with our max iter vari variable. So I could do, the, do this with a for loop, just iterating over all the you know, from zero to, to that number, but I'm going to use a, a while loop just um, just so that we could change it later and use some sort of cutoff criteria. So while count is less than or equal to max iter, uh, count is equal to count plus one, and then we just um, implement our uh, iteration rule. So the new guess, which I called x0, is going to be equal to the old guess, x0 minus gamma times f prime evaluated x0. And that's all there is to it. Uh, so let's finish this while loop here. We don't need that. We can just return um, x0. And let's also return the uh, number of iterations, just uh, so that in the future, if we change this to do some sort of other cutoff, um, we can see how many iterations it took. So let's run the cell, uh, and now let's actually just try it out. So x0, and the number of counts, is equal to uh, gradient descent. Gradient descent, uh, our derivative function and our x0, and I think I put uh, 4 as our uh, number up here. Yes, I did. So let's run it and see if there are any errors in that code. So far, so good. So let's see if this is actually correct. So print x0. What are the odds I didn't screw something up? Hey, how about that? 1.25, minus 1.25. Uh, just what we thought. So this is, you know, pretty, pretty pretty damn simple. So let's extend it to something slightly more involved. Okay, so when editing this video together, I was not very pleased about the way uh, certain elements of it flowed together, um, especially for the more uh, advanced multivariable part. Um, I skipped over a lot of steps, just kind of uh, assume, assume knowledge that may not be there. So um, instead of going back and re-recording it, what I think I'm going to do is just stop it here and uh, break this into two or three parts since I'd rather have, you know, three 10 minute videos than one 30 minute video anyways. I think the chunks are a little more digestible that way. So that's what we will do. So, okay. Um, until next time, then I will see you and uh, cool.